Hey everybody, apparently one of my fans sent me a little care package. Let's see what's inside. Spider-Man 3. X-Men The Last Stand. Matrix Revolutions. The Godfather 3. What kind of monster would send this? Wait, there's a note. Oh my god. Everybody, Sexy Math the Pharaoh Wizard here, and by my little subtle intro there, you can tell I'm going to talk about third movies today. So third movies are kind of the bane of the existence of franchises. Uh, they tend to not be very good. Uh, they range from just being a disappointing ending to derailing the franchise till they can fix it years later to full on killing a totally good and profitable franchise causing them to reboot it a mere five years later. And with special features and you know the internet and the information age, sure we could figure out why these all are broken, but there's too many different reasons. I mean there's contractual reasons, budgetary reasons, people not giving a shit. So instead of getting into that, let's take a more positive approach and let's talk about the top 10 third movies. Before we get really into this, couple rules. First, uh, I'm counting a third movie chronologically, not canonically. Meaning, the third movie that was released for a franchise, not where the movie takes place within said franchise. Meaning something like uh, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, which actually takes place during part five, would count because it was the third movie released. Same with something like Good, Bad, and the Ugly, was technically a prequel, but it was the third released. So, that's the way I'm counting a third movie, just so we're on the same page. Second, I'm taking these as individual movies as themselves. A lot of these aren't the best in the franchise, but as a movie in its own right, is it good, isn't it enjoyable? Uh, third, I am uh, omitting all Marvel Cinematic Universe movies because it got too confusing trying to figure out what exactly is a third movie. Because something like Iron Man, uh, you got Iron Man 1, 2, and 3, but you can't watch Iron Man 3 and understand it without watching The Avengers. So does that make The Avengers the third movie in the Iron Man saga? But then that would mean The Avengers is also the second movie in the Captain America and Thor and Hulk sagas. And it's also Avengers the sixth movie in Marvel Cinematic, you know, Phase 1. So it got too confusing. I'm counting the Marvel Cinematic Universe as one long franchise. So being with my first rule, that would put Iron Man 2 as the third movie in the MCU. And spoilers, it's not on this list. Finally, there is one glaring omittance to this, to this list. I am well aware I am leaving this movie off, and it doesn't break any of the rules. I personally just did not like the movie or the franchise as a whole, so there you go. Um, it's This is my opinion, obviously, so this is all my opinion, but all opinions are valid too, so if you feel like you need to yell at me in the comments below, go ahead and do so, but know that I left this movie off on purpose. All right, let's get into it. Number 10, Red Dragon. So obviously this hits my first rule super hard as this is a the technically the second movie in the Hannibal franchise if you count Hannibal Rising. 
and uh, this is takes place before the first one released, at least. Um, but it is the third movie released in the in the franchise. Red Dragon is fantastic. Anthony Hopkins just owns that role. It's his signature role. And, you know, Ed Norton comes in. He's fantastic. Uh, Ray Fiennes is so amazing as well. He's so freaking creepy. There's so many twists and turns going on. I just freaking love this movie. I enjoy it to no end. Great, great movie. Number 9, Saw 3. So I'm a fan of the Saw franchise. I loved every single one of them up until the final piece crap. But they were I think they are great movies. Outside of just the gore, they have a really cool uh, continuous storyline going. Um, and if you didn't know, it's made up of two franchises. You have the Amanda franchise, which is 1, 2, and 3, and the Hoffman franchise, which is 4, 5, and 6. So the third one is the end of the Amanda trilogy. And it's a great end to that character. It's just so many twists and turns. Um, it's the first time you see someone going through a series of tests by themselves, rather than just in a single test. And the ongoing story of the subject, you kind of see his story being built up as you go on. And the ending just throws you through a loop. It's so good, so amazing. Saw 3. Number 8, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Ah, you forgot this one was the third movie, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah, because you got Vacation, European Vacation, and now Christmas Vacation. Of course, it's a Christmas classic. Everyone loves this movie. You know, everyone relates to different parts of it you know the old people falling asleep on the couch the overzealous you know decorator in your neighborhood just so many parts that you can relate to and love and it's it holds up till today it's fantastic it's a classic you can't love national lampoons christmas vacation number seven a nightmare on elm street three dream warriors so if you saw my worst to best list of Nightmare on Elm Street movies, I put this one pretty high up there because it is fantastic. Uh, it introduces a lot of ideas that will be uh, continuous throughout the rest of the franchise, as well as I think this is the one that did the one-liners the best, that kept them creepy, yet still kind of funny, and, you know, not trying to be funny, but more just being a smart-ass kind of thing, and it, it worked out really well. There's some amazing moments, some memorable moments, and the idea that, you know, Freddy can do whatever he wants in the dream world, but so can you, because it's your dream. And you can fight him that way. Um, you know, there are some cheesy moments, but I love this one. It's incredibly enjoyable, fantastic. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Number 6, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So when I asked on Twitter, what's everyone's favorite third movie, this one came up quite a lot, and I totally agree with you. The Prisoner of Azkaban is a great movie. Uh, I like to jokingly call it Harry Potter and the Time Travel Watch thingy and also Glowy Animals. Uh, you know, I'm not really into the books, but, um, and I don't know if this relates more in the books, but this movie seemed like this is the first time you're really seeing a saga rather than just individual encapsed movies. Like this one kind of started going off more of that there's more going on within this Harry Potter universe and so a lot of things they introduced they did really well and also the time traveling watch uh, thingy uh, really worked out and it was explained quickly and well enough to where you know because time travel can get convoluted it really worked out well um, it's fantastic uh, you know what can't go wrong with Harry Potter can you number five Rocky 3. Adrian! Yes, Rocky 3. Uh, the first time you get a new villain boxer of Mr. T, who was great in this. Um, but you also get to see, you know, a real evolution of these characters, you know. Uh, Creed was the villain boxer in the first two movies. Now you get to see him and Rocky team up. Um, you got the death, you know, of, of Mickey... And, you know, it's so heartfelt and sad, but done really well. It's, you know, it's great. I, I like to see how Rocky 
And all the other ones, he kind of goes to the bottom and get. He has to work his way up. This one, he started at the top, and then you had to. You have to watch his fall and come back up again. And it's a great little storyline for him. And I love this addition to that franchise. Number four, Toy Story three. So of course, if anyone's gonna do a good third movie, it's gonna be Pixar. I mean, the, the idea, at least, that I took away from it, you know, giving up your childhood and moving on to the next phase of your life and just the emotions that are tied up and they just want, they, can't, they need to move on. It's, it's, damn you, Pixar! I don't want to have these feelings. Toy Story 3, go on the next one, go on the next one. Number three, Die Hard with a Vengeance. So I almost forgot this one because it's so good. I almost forget there's other Die Hard movies, oddly enough. Um, this is the first one I got to see, you know, in my age growing up. And it's so good. And I'm so glad that you guys brought it up on Twitter. And... It's amazing, you know, the addition of Samuel L. Jackson. Um, this is before John McClane basically became a superhero with how he is now. Um, and honestly, in my opinion, I like this one at times better than the first one. But we can definitely all agree this is the best Die Hard sequel. I don't think anyone can argue that. It's fantastic, great action, great acting, you know, great twists and turns within the story. It's amazing. You gotta love Die Hard. Number two, Star Wars, Episode Six, Return of the Jedi. So it's easy to forget this was considered a, a bad third movie at the time, and some people might still consider it that. But when you compare complaining about Ewoks to complaining about Jar Jar and Midichlorians and Hayden Christensen, Ewoks don't sound so bad, do they? <laughs> um, I always did enjoy this one a lot. Uh, I love the final battle between Luke and Darth Vader and seeing Luke's story come to a close that he's now a Jedi like his father before him. And yeah, it's another Death Star, but you know what? I'm going to address this complaint right now. The first Death Star worked. It blew up a goddamn planet. It did what it was supposed to do. So why would they abandon this idea after just it got destroyed once? Why not... Fix it and make this one better. Come on. Like, it's it's not a terrible idea to keep doing Death Stars. I'm sorry. They work. Now, if it didn't work at all, sure. But anyways, back on subject. Return of the Jedi. So good. Great ending to the trilogy. You know what? It's awesome. I, I don't know what else to say. It's awesome. All right, before I get into number one, for those of you keeping keeping track at home there's two major third movies i have not mentioned yet one of them's number one so get ready to give me all your hate below when i don't mention the movie that you want so here we go number one number one indiana jones in the last crusade i Freaking love this movie. Uh, when I was younger, this is the only Indiana Jones I wanted to watch. My parents did show me the other ones, but this is the one I wanted to watch. This is the fun one. It's a near-perfect movie. Everything works so well. The jokes, the action, the storyline even works really well. Uh, there's, you know, it's it's really hard to even try and pick apart. I, I can't even really get into it without just going every scene and how this scene's awesome, this scene's awesome, this scene's awesome. It's a great movie. I love this movie. And it is the pinnacle of the end of a trilogy. This is how you end a trilogy. And it's the pinnacle of third movies. It is the best third movie of all time. So uh, what movies uh, do you think I left off? Uh, stay through, through the credits. I'm going to list a couple honorable mentions at the end. Um, leaving off that omittance that I refuse to talk about. But, you know, to leave off anything else that really worked, um, and this is like a really cool, fun experience for me. Uh, I, a lot of my friends talk about, you know, how bad third movies are and what is the good third movie. And it's kind of fun to really look into it. And you know what? They're not so bad. There are some really good gems 
that are third movies that I got to find doing this, and it's really cool. And it made me almost think, like, what's what's the top ten fourth movies now? Like, because that's where it's really getting into the nitty gritty of a franchise, a good fourth movie. So that that's probably a video for another day. I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard. Until next time, hold on to your hold slots.